that plan. Don't you want to go to that plan? Don't you want to go to that plan? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, there's no confusion in that land. No confusion in that land. There's no confusion in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, there's no confusion in that land. No confusion in that land. No confusion in that land. Where I'm from, where I'm from, and I got a savior in that land. I got a savior in that land. I got a savior. In that land, where I'm bound, where I'm bound, and I got a savior in that land. I got a savior in that land. I got a savior in that land, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Don't you wanna go? To that land, don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go? Thank you so much for your patience and giving our hearts for the Lord and saving you, Jesus Christ. We're doing the best we can this morning. We have some sound, and apparently this mic isn't picking up. But that's okay. We will speak loudly in this direction. <laughs> So that those of you who are watching are mine, by the way, we have at least 10 people watching on mine this morning. So we're so grateful for you and grateful for your presence as we continue our church school series entitled The Ministry of Giving. The Ministry of Giving. And if there happens to be anyone who's watching for the first time, we'd like to let you know that the purpose of our church school is not just a Bible study. We do Bible study on Monday night, so hopefully we'll see you on Monday night at 6.30. But what we want to do is we want to talk about why we do what we do, specifically at First Baptist Church in Providence, Michigan, and how that's shaped by the Spirit. So talking about this ministry of giving, we'd like to take a look at our meditation for this entire series. The meditation puts us in the mind to receive the lesson that the Lord is going to give us as it pertains to this topic, it comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We intend on reading these verses at the end of each church school session associated with this series. In the King James Version reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give. To give what? Your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be living and holy sacrifices. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind people find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know what God's will. Then you want to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, 
am perfect. What alternative? We were talking this morning, uh, just before going, we went on by, and uh, one of our members, who was declared that she's a bitch woman, she's not very direction. But she said something that we talked about. Here. And she asked, she, she was making a mention of how people would go you know, ask the pastor's questions like, can I go to the movies? Can I go to the casino? Can I can I do the boo-boo? <laughs> she didn't say that. But it's interesting. If you need to ask, Maybe we're not giving it the right way. As it says here in verse 2, when you, when you present your body a living sacrifice and you present yourself to the Lord, he will tell you what to do. And as you do so, you will learn what God's will is for you. And you won't have to ask the pastor. Is that right? Is it right? It's okay to not play water. What does the Lord say? If you really, really have to ask somebody, ask Jesus. Honestly, take it to the Lord in prayer. Because little old me, I've been some places I shouldn't have gone. I've done some things I shouldn't have done. And that's not to say, that is not to say that, uh, you know, you see, if, if you happen to see Pastor Pippa's that you can see on a regular basis, but I have stepped through there. <laughs> <laughs> and I have pushed a few buttons in my day. I sure have. I sure have. But I, I'm just a man. In the flesh, I have the same issues that you have. I heard the Pastor, it was so wonderful. You know, it just touched my heart. Again, we're talking about giving, right? Uh, husbands, we're supposed to give ourselves to our wives, right? Yes. Wives, you're supposed to give yourself to your husband, yes. right? Amen? Amen? Well, this pastor said that uh, the wife would come to him saying that her husband just, just, wants, just wants to be affectionate all the time. Every night, he wants to play in your affections. She gets tired. And so she said, Pastor, can you pray for this man? And he gets off with me. And he says, No, sister, because I got the same demon he said. <laughs> 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 Why is he still free? Why is he still free? But we say that, you know, I say it just, but it's not just really honest. Bring this forth and talk about the ministry. What we're really looking at, keep in mind that the, the, the objective of the study, again, it's not to make you feel guilty, it's not to condemn anybody. Because we all are works in progress, and certainly I've got enough to condemn myself over it. <laughs> I'm in here, start condemning you all about anything. Um, but we want to we make sure that. We get a better understanding, number one, of what ministry is as it pertains to doing the work that God has set for you to do. We minister all the time, but are you doing what God wants you to do? So when we talk about the ministry and giving, the ministry part that we're talking about is your being an agent of the Lord, providing a service right now. We don't have to wait until New Jerusalem has been built. What can we do right now in this natural life? How can you fulfill that calling? God has a calling for each and every one of us. He has a calling for you. He's got a calling for me. And how do you act, how do you, uh, act in that calling? Well, you need to follow the Holy Spirit. So you know, ask the Holy Spirit, should I do this? Should I do that? i got to bring uh, Peter up. Remember how Peter, he was told, to go have a meal with the Gentile. And that Gentile was eating things that were not a part of Peter's preferred diet. And God had told the man to welcome Peter. I don't know if, if Peter, from the scripture, this in Acts, um, that Peter remembered or knew that God had talked to the, the hosts, right? So Peter was like, oh, I don't know, I'm making it. 
weak disease, poor. Yeah. And God basically told him, who are you to declare anything that I make unclean? Right? I told you to go down there and eat and eat what he gives you. You, you, don't, have, you don't have the authority to declare anything that God made unclean. The question is, what heart are you using to take it? What are your motivations? And if you're moved by the Holy Spirit, you never know. Maybe one day a believer will go through a little casino and come out on the other side with a bunch of other believers with them. I don't know. And just because you're coming to the church doesn't mean that the church folk have good intentions all the time, too. Uh oh, amen. <laughs> uh oh. I heard, I read somewhere in the Bible, I think it was in Job, that there was a, this Satan was skipping around heaven one day, and God was like, well, what are you doing here? So we have to be mindful. Intentions mean something. Jesus said that sin begins where? In the heart. That's your soul. It's the, it's the workplace of the spirit or spirits. Which spirit are you going to listen to? Then when we talk about giving, we're really talking about bestowing or using something that the Lord has put within your possession um, to benefit other folks. And who knows? You might benefit from it too. But we're not looking, our first priority is not to benefit ourselves. But how can you benefit others? What you'll find is as you help others, that helps you because we need each other. And no one person do everything. But it still has to be led by the great God. Amen. So now we're going to look at our first scripture that's going to give us some more direction. We've reached now the third objective of our study. Let's look at some biblical instruction. And we're going to spend some time this morning. In the epistle or letter that was written by James. Let's take a look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 1 through 27. Before we do, I'd like to give you a little context about James. James is regarded to be one of Jesus' half-brothers. And when he was growing up with Jesus, granted he may have walked with Jesus' son, or talked with Jesus' son, but it's my understanding that he did not view his half-brother the same way that Jesus' disciples do. He was a little too familiar. Very bad. His family in general, for the exception of his mother and his father, because they were given some special information by the Lord, didn't really think of him like being, didn't really think of him as being a Messiah. So James was somebody who didn't walk, didn't give for the Lord, didn't walk for the Lord, didn't talk for the Lord after he learned some things. And perhaps we all can appreciate what it's like to be similar to James. I don't know about you, but I have been standing up preaching all my life. I don't know about you, I haven't sang songs all my life. I didn't even know how to pray. I had to learn these things. I'm still learning these things. So let's look at what they were James is saying in verses 1 through 27 of chapter 1. We would like to hear the King James Version this morning. Matthew and King James Version. We've got some amplified text in there. And then I'd like to hear those same verses in the English Standard Version. Then we'll talk about it. We're going to read them all. We're going to read all three versions. I know 27 verses may sound like a lot, but we need a lot right now. We need a lot right now. So we'll do King James first. If you have some Amen. Brother Martin. Yeah. Yes, sir. Verse 1 through 27. Amen. Serve God. Verse 1 through 12. My brother, no 
understand that this is because of 12 tribes and people are chosen. And I believe that you are a chosen one, regardless as to whether or not you know who you play. And I say that because Jesus has already died, risen again, and ascended to heaven. And we understand that he chose us. We did not choose him. He chose us first. Therefore, these words that apply to the quote unquote 12 tribes, regardless if you know you're part of them or not, also apply to you. You are a chosen generation. You are a peculiar people. We're up in church and it's not even 10 o'clock yet. Some folks have got out of bed yet. That's not peculiar. You are a peculiar people. You are hearing this for a reason. And it's not because I want you to hear it. It's not because you want you to hear it. It's because he wants you. The Lord himself. So this applies to you. Now my personal belief is, I believe we are the citizens of God. Scattered all over the place. Go ahead. Poison. Wouldn't that break? This is a Consider it an opportunity for great joy. 
Now, that sounds uh, <laughs> Anybody here, you know, got some bad news? Like, yes! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody wake up with some pain? Like, oh, thank you, Jesus! <laughs> And we have to cross all 
comes, and Jesus said, he said to those who endure to the end, yes, shall reign with me. I'm paraphrasing. Shall reign with me. This is not an ego reign. Because keep in mind, with this new heaven, when this new earth is established, we're not just skipping around singing to that day. Folks are going to have access to the tree of life, which is meant for the healing of the nations. It's not, a, I don't think it's going to be a vacation. There's a work that needs to be done. If you're going to reign, if you are a leader, that doesn't mean that folks just, they just, they just do stuff that you want them to do. No, if you are a true leader, you are ministering to people. You are providing something to people. And by the way, followers, you provide too. So it's not just a one-way street. Leaders, they can help with direction. But a leader can direct all over the place. Nobody's going to follow. It doesn't mean anything. Followers, if you want to be a leader, you got to learn how to follow first. Maybe that's what we're doing now. If you're going to reign with Christ, how can you reign with Christ if you don't even know how to follow yet? So now, when trouble comes our way, we have a choice to make. As uh, uh, James says, your endurance has a chance to grow. You heard in other uh, religions, the opportunity. Just because a problem comes doesn't mean you're going to grow. The question is, who are you going to follow? Are you going to follow yourself? Are you going to follow the Lord? Are you going to follow some other third party that's not even in the mix right now? You're learning to follow Jesus. That's what we're here for right now. You're learning to follow. Pastors are learning to follow. Preachers are learning to follow. Deacons, we're, we're, we're practicing. That's why when something when, when trouble comes our way, when we take our minds off of ourselves and put it on God, now we can see what the Lord can do through us. Choirs, you're learning to follow. Ushers, you're learning to follow. Few bench warmers, you're learning to follow. Amen. It's an opportunity to grow and learn how to give based on what. This is where we're going to stop today. But next week, we're going to be right back up to James chapter number verse 4. It's certainly heard something bad, something sad, something done. I've heard and this crazy moment of that. I'd like to welcome everyone to stay abreast of what's happening at First Baptist Church. Keep us in prayer as you do so. Feel free to visit the church's website. That web address is www.fbc-romulus.org. You'll find links to all of our services, as well as to other study guides for the Bible and other health and information. And we're going to go onto the computer and do some computer magic. Put a nice button out there that will hopefully be available at 1015 so that you all may join us for our Sunday worship service. Amen? Amen. 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 Right, thank you. Yeah. Share the joy, church. Share the joy. Amen. As always, we pray that you would stay uh, encouraged with God's word. Say safe in his arms. Say connect. Keep safe. Our husbands, let's stand for business. Let us look to the Lord. Now, once again, we pray again for the day, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the all power, glory, and honor forever. Let us see you, man. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.